Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at some DeFi projects and the cryptocurrency news. Now the narrative that we've been following here is a shift towards DeFi. We've gone from NFTs and we think we're moving a little towards DeFi and layer twos. At least that's what we can see in the charts. And now the news is starting to come through to back that up. So we're going to check that out in the cryptocurrency news today. Plus we'll look at Bitcoin and the Bitcoin dominance chart. Uh, these are the important plays to understand whether we are going to see an altcoin season or a dump. So if you love the sound of that, dumps, hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification icon. You guys have done a great job yesterday. I got three videos out. Thank you very much for your support. Trying something different there with shorter videos on a particular crypto. I'll bring you one of those tomorrow. It's going to be Litecoin. It's been some time since we've covered Litecoin in detail, but for today, we're going to get through the DeFi layer two cryptocurrency news and of course the overall market caps which we will look at right now. Coin market cap shows us we are just short of 2 trillion again. We just touched over it the other day and now we're just back under 2 trillion dollar total market cap. Why is that important? Well, possibly a psychological level and it's made up of over 9,000 cryptocurrencies now. Bitcoin struggling to hold the $58,000 level, at least at the time of this video. And over the last couple of days, we saw it drop and we're going to cover that in a moment. Ethereum back above 2000. I really didn't think we would hold this 2000 level for that much longer, but look, here we are 2000. Hopefully we get closer to that breakout of the uh, all time high at 2100. Binance back at $421 tether. XRP, what do you know? Dollar each. Cardano, dollar twenty. Polkadot at forty-one US. Uniswap looking a little weaker compared to everything else on the chart, even though it's up three uh, percent on the week and a percent on the day. Just the chart isn't as strong. And Litecoin is the big one that everyone's been waiting for forever. That's going to come out tomorrow. Now I'll make mention if you guys are noticing a difference with the volume, just let me know down below. I am trying out a new little microphone here, a blue yeti nano thing here so blue yeti nano if they sound great and you're looking for a microphone maybe this is the one for you so anyway i won't talk about that too much you guys have mentioned something about the audio so i'm trying out a few different things here got a new one in the background as well which we'll try out in another video okay so that's the coin market cap that's our market cap that we're looking at today uh twitter because i posted here now what will we see first on bitcoin you guys are now saying 60,000 before we see 50,000. We're at 58, so obviously we're closer. You know my position? I think maybe we'll see a 50,000. If we did see 60, I don't think it'll be for very long. But of course, this is the comment here. <laughs> That's what I've asked, 60 or 50 first. Let me know, go across to Twitter, follow me over there, join us for videos, news, and poll updates, and go let yourself be heard. Fear and greed, 70%. We've been sitting on this for the last 7 to 14 days, 70, 73, 74, barely reaching into the extreme greed, which is a good thing if we want to see some alt season. But if we hit into that extreme greed, that's usually when Bitcoin is going into all-time highs. That's when we see alts drag along with it, but we don't see the Bitcoin value in the alts also rise. And we want to see some gains in our Bitcoin value. Coin market cow updates, one inch. Coinbase Pro listing. So as I've said, we're going to cover a few things here. One inch Coinbase Pro listing. These are the altcoins I'm going to look at. Zillica, uh, when breakout, everyone's asking for that. Carver, slow grind up, but it's got some good news. And I'm concerned a little about the engine move here. They were also um, listed on Coinbase Pro. So these are Coinbase Pro listings, not your regular Coinbase. Sorry if I confused you there. As I said, tomorrow, Litecoin. Uh, okay, BTC, BTC, D. So Coinbase Pro listing for engine, I'll oh, just keep switching, one inch and engine, but engine chart doesn't look as strong. Now I'll make mention in regards to the charts and great projects, I keep these on the radar for the bear markets. Now the bear market could come tomorrow, it could come next year, we don't know, but we know the projects that are perform performed and that are doing really well. And so that's what I did during the previous bear market, I'm thinking everything is going on Ethereum, everything DeFi, everything, uh, you know, the layer twos that are getting built because of the, obviously the gas fees, the decentralized exchanges, NFTs, everything is on Ethereum. So I'm buying up Ethereum. Come the next bear market, do your research and 
maybe look into buying some engine at very low prices. It should drop at some point. Let's just wait and see. That's just something that I've learned from the last three to four years in the space. Uh, the other thing I'll, I'll mention is Investor Insider Newsletter. Edition one is out now. This is a free newsletter. If you want to subscribe to it, there's a link in the description down below. Just drop your email address in there when you go across the Investor Accelerator website. And the second edition will be released next week. So we talk about everything, uh, cryptocurrency on the charts, property and overall investing. So it's not just cryptocurrency. Obviously, we want to do something else with our wealth long term. DeFi, total value locked added 35 billion in quarter one. All this article basically tells me is it added 35 billion. I'm mentioning this because the narrative of DeFi is starting to pop up again in news topics. That's pretty much as far as we need to go with this. Is DeFi a tool for the rich? Is it uh, showing signs of market maturity? We've got big players interested in it. Doesn't mean they're actually in the space just yet. Of course, there are some that are. But overall, it's similar to the last cycle where it was, yeah, you know, all these big names are coming in and then all of a sudden they don't. So I'm not getting my hopes up, but I do believe that a DeFi will be here long term. And so I'm continuing to focus a lot more energy in the DeFi space than I would in other areas. DeFi provides many of the same financial services that banks do, but in decentralized, but in a decentralized autonomous fashion. Banks traditionally accept deposits and provide loans to both individual business customers as their lead offering, but DeFi enables the borrowing and lending of money on an even larger scale between unknown partic participants and without the middleman. That's why I like DeFi over uh, traditional banking. Traditional banking can still close accounts. They've done that to some of my accounts in the years gone by. They just close it down, send you a letter. We don't want your business anymore. Have you had that before? Let us know in the comments. With decentralized finance, I assume that's not going to happen. It's decentralized. Why would they stop someone transacting and doing business on their platforms? I, you know, it's it's decentralized. No one owns it. Robinhood. Now it says nine and a half million customers traded crypto in quarter one, up from 1.7 million in quarter four. So that's a huge increase. Very very big increase. I'm just using this to look at. Are retail investors here? Because we often hear uh, the retail isn't here and the retail is coming, they're coming, they're coming. I honestly think retail is here. You probably wouldn't be on this channel if you didn't hear from it already in the last couple of months. If you just started a month ago, you probably wouldn't be here. And the the potential that I see now with the, the market is a clearing out, meaning there's a lot of hype. So if we get a clearing out, if we get the if we get Bitcoin to drop past its weekly lows and scare people out like it did two days ago and people are thinking, shit, it's over. Uh, if this happens on a larger scale for a few extra days or maybe a couple of weeks, people will get scared off and the retail will probably leave again. And then we build up and then we move again. And so retail always misses out because they don't have the patience to stick around and learn how to invest and how to trade and what market cycles do and volume spread analysis and all this sort of stuff. They don't have the patience to do that. They just want moon last hour, you know, so stick around. I do believe retail is here. Not all of it. We've got plenty more to go, but some retail is here. And if something scares the market, they will probably go. Don't make that yourself. Don't make it a uh, like a second mistake by getting here late because you weren't here in 2020, early 2020, maybe some of you were, but you know what I'm saying. Don't make two mistakes in a row when it comes to your investing and your money. Kava, Kava Labs launches protocol upgrade with Ion Institutional DeFi. I've covered Kava uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is their app and they're trying to target institutional investors by offering uh, the ability to firms to get 25% APY, which is pretty massive. So the example I gave in that video was Tesla, uh, Tesla, sorry to the guys who oh, don't like the way I pronounce it. Tesla, $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. If they were to put that on this app, then they could be earning 25% APY. Now, the uh, Cover Labs admits it is a big, tall order, their words, uh, to convince institutions and obviously corporations that holding Bitcoin to explore the DeFi option, they, they've got to get them across the line. Imagine trying to throw you $1.5 billion into some decentralized finance platform. You're already going out of your way to, you know, going something uh, crazy compared to the rest of the market and buying Bitcoin. 
Now you're going to throw it into some DeFi protocol. Imagine explaining that to all of the shareholders. And it, it's it, it, like they said, it's a tall order, but the opportunity is there now. So if they can come across the line with that, boom, you know, this is going to be really good for Carver and the platform itself as they offer the first cross-chain money market built on Carver's platform that offers lending, borrowing, and yield on cryptocurrencies. So we, we've seen all these before, but the first cross-chain market, uh, this comes on the back of hard protocol and it was a version five. So Carver 5 has successfully been launched and that was part of the Carver 5 mainnet launch. So that's more big news for Carver. Charts look pretty good too. May 2, Mu 2, Me 2 now holds 100 million in Bitcoin. We covered this a couple of weeks ago when they were at around 40 million across Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now they're racking up 100 million worth of Bitcoin and Ether. So double and a half their holdings now, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, we can just see what they have here. Purchase 50 million worth of Bitcoin and 50 million worth of Ethereum. 50-50. Maybe that could be someone else's portfolio. Copy Me Too, the Me Too portfolio. Uh, so the Hong Kong subsidiary of Me Too Incorporated, incorporated in the Cayman Islands, acquired 175.6779 units of Bitcoin for a combined price of $10 million of around the average uh, purchase price, 57000 So, you know, they're buying some coins at these higher levels, thinking that we've got a lot further to go. Exchange tokens rally ahead of next week's long-awaited Coinbase IPO. So we looked at the listings of Coinbase Pro, great, great stuff. Now Coinbase IPO next week, and we see the exchanges rally. And we do see that with uh, one inch, we're seeing so they're the decentralized exchanges, but we're also seeing Binance increase as well. One inch Celsius pancake swap rally as traders return to DeFi. I'm just looking at this as narrative coming across to DeFi. Talked about Cointelegraph here. Uh, that's it. Look, narrative is shifting. We looked at this about two weeks ago. You can see it in the thumbnails on the videos. And this is what we want to get into before the masses get here. So we can buy up lower. Be patient. Moon isn't coming next hour. We want to get in earlier. So we've seen one inch go up, which we'll have a look at. And the last thing I have here is engine. So three reason engine coin price surged over 30%. Simple stuff. Coinbase listing. The launch of JumpNet and Infinity. And technical momentum is an accelerator. So I'm looking at this technicals in just a moment. Let's open up the chart. TVK, my alert's gone off. Someone called it a shit coin or a scam the other day. It dropped and now it's recovered. If it drops again, it drops. I've got the uh, interview with the CTO coming out next week. So stay tuned for that. CTO of TVK. So if you want to know more about that, remember, subscribe to the channel. You'll learn a lot more about this project, which is sitting around 140 odd million dollar market cap with the potential to go a hell of a lot further. So check out that interview coming out next week on the channel. Set your bell notification icon so you see when that comes up. Like the video up if you're finding some value. TBK, 67 cents. Back up a little bit. We're on a weekly chart here. Volume is dropping off as the market drops. No big problem. We want to see the volume increase as it rises. So remember the coins that we are looking at here for myself is uh, Zill. Let's start down the bottom with Zill, BTC on the rise, breakout, volume is lower. It's not going to surprise me, unfortunately, if we do drop back into this accumulation zone, uh, potentially 200, 300 sats there. If it doesn't, even better. We're ready to go, load it up, let's take off. We're waiting for this to go. These are the accumulation zones. For some people, they think that they're bad areas to get in. You want to buy low, sell high. This is low. This is high. Most people, when they write in the comment sections, check this coin out, check out Dent, check out One, check out Phil, check out Theta. I can go on and on and on. Check out Engine. They're usually mentioning those coins when we are in some of these bars here, maybe this bar or maybe this bar here. And so even if it is in this bar and it's got this much further to go, you're looking at 80%, 100%. Of course, all the coins are different, but it's not that much when you consider the prices that you could be buying them at if you were patient. And then the percentage is 
400%, 600%, and more. Some of them do thousands of percent. So even if we're buying further back, then that just multiplies the percentage so much more. Look at that. If I bought it just a few months ago, 1300% already, and for, to this top point, there's 1800%. And so buying it from, from now to the top, 600%. You can see the difference is just in a couple of months here, the massive return difference. And it doesn't look like much on a chart, but this is where the gains are made, not uh, shilling some coin when it's already pumped and then pumps again. It looks amazing and it feels amazing to go up from here to here at 80%, but like, I don't know, it doesn't seem like that much of a cool thing when you can be buying it in at these levels, potentially going here, potentially. But we just got to be patient. So Zill, it is breaking through these old all-time highs. Not a bad thing. We're waiting on this. We're waiting. Volume is decreasing, so I understand that. That just means that maybe we need to hold out just a little bit longer. There's just not the energy in there. But so far, the technicals are looking reasonably good overall. Next, let's go back to Bitcoin and the Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin is at 57,800. So this is what we've been tracking, our double top our 50% levels. This is this is just trading day by day by day. This, this is how it works. People want explosions the next day, but track the levels, follow them up, see what's happening. Double top, 50%. So this is 0 0.5, 55,200. We've had a reaction off that level on high volume. If the market can break through this 60,000 level and hold, then I would say double top, gone. It's in, invalidated. However, we have seen some good volume, but overall the volume is still relatively low compared to all of these other breakouts that we've had in the past. And so if we falter here and just hold up for a bit longer and start to trickle down, it definitely wouldn't surprise me that we will break this and break through the 55% and we'll be on our way to somewhere around the 50 to 55 level. I think we'll probably go a little further than that, somewhere between the 50 and 52. Now I'm sticking my neck out here on the chopping block compared to I would say probably a lot of YouTube because a lot of people are still raving on about a 70 or $80,000 Bitcoin. I would love that. I I'm, I'm see it in the future. I definitely see it in the near future. At the moment, it's so hard for me to, to get on board when I don't see volume. I don't see the energy there. Look at this volume. Just nothing. It's just dying off. Now I'm relying on Bitstamp to give me some accurate data here and I should go and check some other uh, charts as well just to triple confirm this and I will. You should do the same. But if we don't get the volume, we it's, it's hard to say that it's going to push through. If we start to climb up and so we've got to understand all these different areas. If we start to climb up and we get some volume as we start to break these closes, so, so you can see it cleaner, the line chart starts to close above these levels and we get this sort of volume. See, it's higher than the rest of these days. That is a good sign that we're going to break this little triple top here and then position ourselves to break out on high volume. That is what I would want to see in order to invalidate this. So I've said that twice already. That's just how I look at it. One top, two tops, three tops, triple tops. Look at this low here. The lows are breaking down. The tops are breaking down. That's at the moment, it's a downtrend. It's a downtrend. So I want Bitcoin to go up, but I want it to hold steady so that we can get a pump on with alt season as well. You know, we want both. We want everything at once. It just doesn't happen that way. So, so far, I'm still in of the view that we are going lower. I'm not concerned overall. I'm not going to sell out and try and pick it up lower. I don't think that's a great game to play, especially if you have less than five years of experience, less than three years of experience in doing anything trading or investing. So just don't even ask. I, I wouldn't even go there. Uh, so that's my thoughts on Bitcoin. And we'll look at it again tomorrow with Litecoin. Dominance, BTC dominance now. Dropping, dropping, dropping. We've broken out. That's exactly what we've been waiting for. Double tops, breakdown. Perfect. On the daily, we've seen 55 now and we have... We haven't squeezed our way into 54 yet, but we've seen 55. Uh, so that's 55%. We've covered BTC, BTC dominance, Zillica. Uh, last on the charts, we're going to look at engine one inch cover. So let's cover engine briefly. This has broken out. Look at the volume. It has broken out. We're not getting the closes as high as we would like to see just yet. It's possible. I'm just not 
confident in this happening. So the next thing I look at here, this is for engine, my own engine BTC. All right, so this is the BTC chart as well now. This has closed above the previous high. That's a good sign and it's on high volume. So we definitely wanna see this day close higher again, or at least start to come back, form a base and then take off again. Look at where it's holding up right now. This is a major range, just so you can take out some of the swings and you can get a nice clean look. Major high, major low, projected off another major low and it's starting to falter at around 50%, so 6,000 Satoshis. 50% are very important levels. Know how to use these fibs and you will learn uh, good price target areas or areas to be, I wouldn't say concerned with, but just know that these areas do cause uh, some price resistance. So the 50% on the fibs, this is the extension tool here. So fib based extension, and then we use a fib retracement for uh, markets when they're coming back. These are moving forward. One inch Carver. Let's have a quick look at Carver because the good news is out there. Uh, it has moved into all time highs uh, as of uh, the last few days, and we continue to consolidate at these levels. A little bit of volume. We definitely want to start seeing it move on at some point, just get a bit of a breakthrough. Otherwise, I think we'll probably come back and consolidate again on uh, the USD chart. And for the BTC, I this is the level now. I had a little lower, but I think we've got another accumulation to come on uh, on Carver. If we happen not to get there, then yeah, look, these are probably the next levels up here at around 17,000. 17,000 Satoshis currently at 12. So another accumulation would be good. Then another move up. Good DeFi project. Last thing which has had a good move is engine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One inch. One inch. Volume pushing up. Uh, we've got about a half a day left. We want to see this close above the old high of around $6.33. So definitely let's get a close above that tomorrow. So we'll cover that again next week as part of our altcoin gems doing their 10Xs or whatever they do. This is a really good trade that we had earlier on uh, back in January and it just held up for a while, took off again. That was the last trade that I had on this. It was uh, at about $4.60 and that was my stops below here, below these swings. It almost stopped me out and we're now away. So entry at around that 460, currently 37% up. So yeah, not too bad. I'm looking at you know, this $9, $10, $12 area for at least the first target. So that's gonna get me uh, about 100% and then if I can get to that 12 bucks or 13, what are we looking for, $14, then I'll get to my 200% and it'll be easy to take off the initial keep the rest riding, see how far we go. Volume is looking much better than the other charts that we looked at, so we've got good volume on this breakout. Let's hope we close tomorrow above the 6.35. So that's everything that we wanted to cover today. Uh, the DeFi's, the layer twos of Zillica, which we've been covering for some time now. Bitcoin, we've just gotta keep tracking it day by day. News has been covered. I think there's a lot of good stuff still there. I think some of the energy might be running out of the market, which we've been looking at for the last couple of weeks. Some of the other projects are still moving. Everything else is kind of a bit shaky. And I think people are starting to lose their patience. But apart from that, go follow me on Instagram, Twitter. I'll see you guys over there. I'll see you tomorrow for a video on Litecoin. So stick around for that. It's looking like a very good setup finally after many, many months. And like the video up if you found some value, subscribe, bell notification icon, come and join us for the Investor Accelerator. Price goes up in two days time and you get your free newsletter as well. Go and subscribe to that down below. That's it for today's video. Let me know about the microphone, what your thoughts were. Blue Yeti microphone here, the Nano. And I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.